Good afternoon, everybody. It's Lynn, the Leather Bag Lady. How are you all today? It is Monday today, and it is a crappy day. We had a bit of snow over the weekend. I mean, a bit of snow, this much snow. And apparently, we're going to have a major weather event tomorrow. Four centimeters of snow. I was listening to the guy on the radio this morning on my way to the gym. And uh, he's like, since when is four centimeters a, a snow event? He said, I'm going to lose my mind if they close the schools. But our winters are not what they used to be and haven't been for many, many years. So who knows? But we are supposed to be on the lookout for that tomorrow. But the rest of today is going to be eh, damp, melting snow and two or three degrees. So, you know, second week in January, first week in January. Woo. So today's bag is a brand that I actually listed a bag last week and I'm going to compare the two because normally when a brand has bags, they, they follow, like they have an aesthetic or they have, um, what would be the right term? Like they have their own signature style. This company is all over the place to the point where I wonder if they have multiple designers because the, the looks of these bags are so incredibly different from each other that there's no way you could even, you know, you can tell a coach bag, you can tell a roots bag, you can tell this company, you can't really tell nothing. So I don't know. But the bag is as cute as cute can be. Check this little guy out. So if you like purple, this is definitely for you. If you don't like purple, then maybe not. This is a super, super little shoulder crossbody bag. Beautiful gusset. It is a very bold purple. Love the tassel. You know how I feel about tassels. Very 80s, maybe early 90s. I've listed it as 80s, but I'm actually, when I show you the bag I'm going to compare it to, this one might be 90s because like um, the trend, their earlier bags were made in Italy. Their, this brand's earlier bags were made in Canada. This bag has a very sneaky little label in it. High fashion handbags, mode Italy, which if you kind of just didn't think about it for a minute, you would just think that was made in Italy. And it's not. It's like Italian inspired or Italian um, uh, styling, you know, whatever that it it's not made in Italy. So this little guy, I think, supersedes. This one, if you remember, I shared with you last week, and this label is High Fashion Handbags Made in Canada. So, but look at how different these two bags are from the same company. The only um, crossover point is the brass tone uh, hardware and, uh, um, har yeah, hardware. Crazy, eh? But I really like this company. I shared with you um, that my friend and customer in Toronto, Pauline, who bought a beautiful bag from my Shopify um, on my last Shop at the Shed event. So, Pauline, I hope you get it. It is, it's a beautiful bag. I, it's not a brand that I kind of, uh, I mean, I have sold many of those bags, but this bag, the quality, is, I was shocked when I saw the, the brand. The leather is so thick and supple. Even when I was uh, packaging it up, it's got a little bit of weight to it, which just kind of mentioned, yeah, it goes to how beautiful the leather is. But Pauline was telling me that this store is still in existence in Mississauga somewhere. So I really would like to maybe go down and check it out and see what they have on offer. But the strap is beautiful. It's a shiny leather on the front, suede on the back. Sometimes these uh, strips will disengage and start to come away. But nope, everything is just perfect. It is a wipeable interior with one zipper pocket. And then as I showed you already, your high fashion handbag plaque. 
There is a little bit of wear in one of the corners, but I think I might be able to help with that. I'm being a lot more um, diligent with looking at colors that I can actually match. I've been trying, uh, there's a blue, like a teal blue, um, a kind of orangey red, and there's another color. It was like an olive green. Now, the olive green was just a wallet. Now, let me... So, the color didn't match. I'm not even sure if you're going to be able to notice it. I recolored it. So, you can see there's a little bit of variation. It was just a little bit on the corner. But, um, check this out. <laughs> What did I pay for this? $4.29. It's so cute. So that's the kind of recoloring that I, you know, I, I won't stretch to much more adventurous than that, especially in a color that I know I'm going to struggle to match. So I'm finding that it's A, it's super frustrating. And B, I am a bit of a perfectionist. Isn't it amazing how things that you're interested in your standards and your level of perfection is just up here and things you don't give a shit about. <laughs> like I did dishes the other day and I'm finding that unless I put the dish soap right on the plate, especially if it's something that, you know, has had cheese on it or whatever, it doesn't come clean. Like it's clean, but there's almost like a, like you can, there's a finger mark on it or something. I don't give a shit. In the cupboard it goes. <laughs> but my bags, eh, I have got such an incredible standard with these guys. It's hilarious. My kinship is not with um, domestic. I am not a domestic diva at all. A bag diva all day long. But domestic, eh, eh. Getting, I'm kind of over it now, actually. I've been playing house for a couple of years now, and I am really getting to be quite over it. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back to our, our bag. I just wanted to show you the whole strap. So this is a 23-inch uh, strap drop. It is a higher sitting crossbody, nice shoulder bag. The strap has a little bit of weight to it, but, I mean, this isn't going to be a daily driver. This is going to be to match an outfit specifically or... A fun, I mean, can you imagine like a white eyelet cotton dress? I mean, we are on our way to better weather. I saw something on Facebook the other day that it's 39 days until it until it's light until 7 o'clock. Woohoo! <laughs> we've already looked at the RV shows when they're going to be happening because we've got this dang trailer that is going to need some major uh, repair. And we actually talked about going to the trailer last week. And I said to Pius, I said, you know what? How about we don't? Because if we go and it's a disaster, I am not going to be able to quiet my mind from that. I just know I'm not. And I don't need any more overthinking to do than I already do. Um, so it's... Uh, yeah, we ended up, we didn't go. So I think we're going to go maybe, you know, beginning of April, middle of April. Trailer Park opens up May 1st. So, um, yeah, that's, I think that's the best way to go. So when we go to the RV shows, we're going to be looking for new, um, you know, weatherproofing, waterproofing uh, products that we can, you know, get some information on and do some research. Um you know, I mean, if we could get rid of the trailer and replace it, we would do it like that. But we can't. I mean, we just bought the damn thing last year. So we owe way too much money to be doing that. And uh, there is not a lottery win in our future, I don't think. Pius has not been spending money on any of that stuff, mainly because he's home all the time now. So um, we're hoping that this is going to be something that isn't going to be a horrible repair because with how bad his arm is right now, you know, we're not going to be doing any repairs to anything. So hopefully we are over compensating for the damage that we think the winter may have delivered to us in our already damaged trailer. But who knows? So the weekend was great. We went to the motorcycle show on Friday. Um, eh, it's not 
I've never been yet. Last year was the first year I went and Pius was like, this is nothing like it used to be because there was two years where we didn't have anything because of COVID. So a little disappointing again. And I don't know, maybe next year we might miss a year or something. I don't know, because it's still, you know, 50 bucks to get in. And, you know, we didn't buy anything. I Oh, Pius bought a Harley shirt, looked really sharp on him looked really, really good. And we had my cousin's celebration of life on Saturday. My cousin passed away three weeks, a month ago now with ALS. He, he, he was 49. He was turning 50 in a week or whatever. So that was um, a wonderful afternoon. My aunt and uncle were amazing. We saw faces that we haven't seen since we were teenagers. And it was a really, really, really wonderful afternoon. So um, you know, that's been on my mind a little bit. Um, you just, you know, you try and count your blessings, but you still have stuff that's going on in your world that is dragging you down. And, and I am such an overthinker. Oh my goodness me. I wish, I wish I didn't give a shit about things, but I so do. I really, really do. So I sold a bag to a lady last week or the week before. And, um, I got a three out of five. I finally got my star seller rating. It's taken six months for me to get my star seller rating back. When we went to the East Coast last year to get married, I had a customer who asked me, she bought a bag and she said, can you mail it to me in three weeks when I get back from my vacation? So I was like, yeah, sure. No problem. So I missed the deadline date for my uh, sell it like my shipping, uh, via Etsy. And I didn't even think because the customer asked me to hold the bag back, I didn't think I'd get dinged for it. You better believe I got dinged for it. And then the other scenario where I didn't include tracking was when customers buy multiple bags, but they buy them individually. So in future, I have to go into each bag and put the tracking number in again and again and again. Instead of on the first bag, I told the customer, all your bags are in this one package and I only did the tracking number on the first package. So it looked like, as far as Etsy's concerned, that I didn't provide tracking for all the other purses. So through no fault of my own, it has taken me six months. I ship very quickly. That's one of the things I pride myself on. If I get a bag sold, I like to ship it that day or the next, unless it's a weekend or, or whatnot. Um, communication, I'm on my phone constantly. So if you send me a message, I'm getting back to you. And then the reviews. So I made my thousandth sale recently. And I think I have out of a thousand sales, I've got 500 reviews, which I think is pretty awesome. If you've bought a bag from me, you know that I'll put a little card in there. And uh, I have, uh, I, I put, a, I would love to be a scrapbooker. I would love to be a journal keeper. You've heard me say this many times. And I love paper, stationery. I love it. And I found these little books of, like scrapbook paper and I, I, they're perfect because I've got two different, uh, styles. Like one was a country kitchen, one was, you know, starry night or whatever. So, um, I ripped out a page from each book and I included it in the bag. Just, you know, if you're a scrapbooker or if you like, I don't know, it's just, it was just a very, inexpensive way for me to just give a little something as a thank you. So I don't know whether that has helped me get the uh, level of reviews that I've gotten, but you know, five stars is what I am gunning for every time. I don't want my customers ever to have a bad experience. So this lady, God bless her. She loved her bag. It was such a unique bag. I've had it for years and many times I was going to do redonate it, but I just couldn't. The colors were so beautiful. And this lady finally bought it and she gave me three out of five stars. So I, you know, thanked her for her purchase and said, listen, was there anything wrong with your experience? I mean, I strive to give my customers a five star experience every time. Is there anything that I could have done better? She's like, oh, I did. 
And I was like, oh my God. So now it's going to take me another six months to, <laughs> to get that back. Oh my goodness me. It helps us as small business owners so much for your uh, positive reviews and um, feedback. And it is so helpful. It really is. But you can do six months of great work and one negative. And then I had that crazy freaking lady who didn't know she was buying a used bag. I, I, I can't remember how long ago it was, but she bought a bag from me. There were pictures in my listing of the damage. There was a YouTube video showing the damage and a written description mentioning the damage. And she messaged me and called me everything but a white man because she didn't how can you sell bags of this quality and I mean it was a $48 bag or $52 bag I knew it had issues I showed you that there was issues so it got to the point she didn't even realize that Etsy you can't sell a finished product on Etsy unless it's vintage, 20 years or older. So, of course, the dang thing is used. So, she escal So that was my final word to her. It is used. It's a vintage site. Never heard anything back from her. Then I got a notification from Etsy to say that she had escalated the matter. So, they looked into it. They have what's called an Etsy purchase guarantee or whatever. They refunded her the money. I was so pissed, but I got to keep my money because I had a video, pictures, and a written description. So this woman, they just want to get rid of her, I'm sure. They just wanted to, I clearly was not all there or whatever, but that kind of stuff is so damaging to our you know, little worlds that we're trying to create. So my shop at the shed, oh my goodness, what a disaster on Thursday. Um, you know, it's a new project. I'm learning as I go. The upload wouldn't upload. I guess I was trying to upload it to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Can't do that. So one is going to have to precede the other. So I'm not sure. I probably Facebook will get the first upload and then YouTube will come after. Clearly I have to start that process much earlier. So, cause I already had that other video filmed. So, um, this week I will be, uh, selecting another, uh, three bags from my regular stock, one bag from my purse pound stock and another small be it, uh, maybe I'll do a belt this time. I picked up a beautiful lucky brand belt this weekend. So maybe I, I will put that on there, but that's all going really well. I'm looking at, uh, doing more on LinkedIn. I didn't even know I had a LinkedIn profile, but I guess I did. I went to sign up and it says you're already signed up. So, um, that is something I'm going to start doing because I really do feel that my bags and my belts and my wallets and everything have a great connection to, um, uh, professionals, professional women, men as well. I've got lots of beautiful book bags, briefcases, you know, the belts, that kind of thing. Um, you know, maybe as a professional, uh, certain, um, industries require you to have, you know, an aesthetic, if you're in sales, car sales, realtor, whatever you, you know, part of what gets you motivated and gunned up to be a salesperson is how you feel. And sometimes having, you know, a new to you bag or wallet or whatever, just gives you a little bit of an uplift. So, you know, if, financially how the world is right now. Maybe you can't go to the mall and spend 300 bucks on a new coach bag or whatever, but you might be able to spend, you know, 55, 60 with me on my dot com to buy something new to you. So that is something that I'm going to start um, exploring uh, from a business to business, uh, a B2B uh, platform for, um, you know, for my uh, customers. So, promoting, you know, my shop at the shed event. So this week will be number three. 
So the bags that are in my new Facebook collection now, my new YouTube collection will move into their respective collections and there will be a new uh, five item shop at the shed event on Thursday evening around 730 is when I plan to hopefully have it all uploaded and ready for you. I've done something with my phone. This internet is still a problem. I had my son here Friday night till God knows what time. We thought we had figured it out, but this morning it's worse than ever. I couldn't even upload the pictures onto my Etsy listing. I had to go in the house. So I am, I am really up to here with it. I am so frustrated. I can't even tell you because I've obviously turned some stuff on and off. I did my listing, that little bag today. I had to redo it four times when I, so Etsy has changed their um, app for selling. They changed it sometime last year. And a lot of the features that I appreciated are gone. And I mean, I don't know if you are all uh, Etsy sellers out there. And, and if I'm missing something, please let me know. But you used to be able to leave a listing as unfinished and you could go back into it where you left off. This new selling app, it doesn't seem to allow you to do that. If you come out to go do something else or look something up and you go back into it, you got to start all over again. Like that's just crap. So I don't know. I'm not happy with that at all because when I link my YouTube video, sometimes I have to go out and remind myself what the number, like what episode it is, whatever. Like I said, I was so free. What I ended up doing was just putting one word in each category and at least saving the listing so it wouldn't lose. And then I went back in and edited it and I added everything else because it's so freaking frustrating. It's ridiculous. Welcome to my world on this Monday. Oh my goodness me. Anyway, everybody, hopefully I've got my clients tonight. I uh, haven't seen them in three weeks, so it's been a nice break actually. But um, And I've actually requested more hours. Here's me. I was giving it up altogether. But uh, yeah, my shows are not a viable option at the moment. Uh, the experience I had in December where six out of eight shows canceled and like the night before. Um, yeah, I, I can't uh, manage my, uh, you know, daily financial responsibilities with, with that kind of uncertainty. So we move forward and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will talk to you tomorrow.